Okay guys, welcome back to This Week in BJJ. This is the first week after the 2013 Pan Championship and there was a couple things that I saw that, well Sean and I both saw, that were unique and that we don't see a lot of. So I wanted to get Sean's expertise on the matter and show us how we can break this down. Uh, this is Sean Williams and we're joined tonight with Will Flores who's going to be the training partner. So uh, let's get into it, Sean. The first one was this technique doesn't even have a name. Maybe we got to call up Eddie Bravo and ask for a name. But uh, it was done with, well, you talk about it. Yeah, it was a, it's a bicep slicer that turns into a shoulder lock after it's rolled. And I'm going to teach it from the turtle position. This is where I uh, do it from. But it's the same move that when it was passing, Galvon had an overhook on the shin and Galv, uh, Bouchesha put his knee down and right into the same exact position. But here's what we're going to show. We're going to show it from a turtle position when a guy is has this arm backwards defending the hooks. Maybe he's pushing on your knee or whatnot, so he's defending the hook. This leg is gonna come over and, and trap the, the, the bicep, right? So my shin is on the bicep, which it doesn't really look like, it doesn't look like much at all right now, okay? You're gonna take your hand inside, inside your own foot. So I don't know if you guys can see this. This hand is gonna go inside the foot and I'm gonna pick up Will's wrist. Now, I'm going to figure for my, my legs, and it's going to feel like you have to kind of go slow on your training partner because it feels miserable, right? Will's going to roll over for me, and you're going to see that we land in the same position that Galvan was in, right? The only difference is I've got my top leg where Bouchesha had the bottom leg, but it's the same exact lock. Now, what Bouchesha was doing was, was staying on this arm. And if Will, I'm sure Will can feel it right now, it's uncomfortable, but even if I push with my legs, it moves him and it's not really any finishing power on the shoulder. Um, what I typically like to do is hold the head and arm. And now I've got pulling power on the head and pushing power on the legs, and it really feels like your shoulder's gonna pop right out of joint. Feel that? Yes, I do. Yeah, so I like to keep the head and arm that way I can extend the legs away and get a tap on the shoulder rather than holding here. Now, the interesting thing is if we go back to this way and Will just rolls over this shoulder, you're gonna see that it's just a bicep slicer, right? It's just a bicep slicer from the top. So you can do this from the top, you can do it and then roll, you can do it from the turtle, like I said, where I like to hit it from as a turtle. But what happened is Galvon rolled out of that and eventually got out because it was just too, he rolled upside down, pushed his body away, and untied this move. Sean, if you go back into, yep. the, into the position. So we'll go back to the turtle. It's so one of the easiest places to set it up from as a move is when the guy is armed back here and, and we have our, our top leg over the bicep. This, now here's the move. I need to get this hand up over my foot. So you guys all see that. It almost looks like a normal plata, right? But it's not. And then I'm gonna figure for my leg, right? But all, the whole time, I'm gonna be on the top, okay? So th this is, this is the, the trap. Right. Now what happens is he'll hit this, he'll roll over this side, roll over the other way. Well, otherwise you're gonna finish yourself, not that shoulder roll, just uh, no. face me, yep. And then we get into this crucifix position, right? So now we're in a crucifix looking position, but it's different because the arm is on the outside. Like if you notice, if I let this out, this are, it's not in crucifix. Crucifix would be like this, okay? This position is like a bicep slicer. So there, uh, Bouchesha had the Kimura grip. Right, he had a Kimura grip and, but this pro the problem in my opinion is that if I push on the legs and pull on the arm, it's too loose. What if you try to hip away? That so if I try to hip away, what can kind of happen is get a little bit of a Kimura. Right, so if I, if I hold Will in place and I keep hipping away, it's gonna eventually end up sort of like a Kimura because the arm is, is, this arm is being bent backwards behind his back. It's a difficult finish because he can keep pushing his feet back on me. So if he just pushes, Will just push, keep pushing. Yeah, that's the problem with that finish. So what I prefer to do is make sure that you lock the head and arm. Already you can feel the pressure. Yeah. And then you pull the head and arm to you and you extend the legs and it, oh, it's hurting, it's painful on the, uh, on the old shoulder there. Can we go back to the bicep slicer, standard bicep slicer from maybe a failed arm bar? Yeah, or cross, I, I do it from cross side. You wanna see a cross okay. side bicep yeah. slicer? Do the same bicep slicer from cross side, right? So we all like to do, you know, this position where we have one leg over like this, right? Or 
we have one, the, 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 the arm pinned like this. If I have either shin over Will's bicep, then this is a real easy bicep slicer. All I do is sit back, sit my leg back, drag this leg right up, and then you have the figure four and you can bicep slice. You just extend your knees, hips down, and you get a bicep slicer. Wow. So some guys are so resilient. Can you stay there? Yep. Some guys are so resilient at a bicep slicer. Yes. Is there a way to roll over and end up in the position you were before? Mm -hmm. Now, you're, I, I haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, believe, I don't believe I would ever roll over from that position because I need to get behind them. So the only, thing, the only way it would be rel that type of situation would happen is if he would try to flip back over upside down. Upside down. Yeah, because it, to, for me to roll over and have his back exposed is gonna be a bit much. Right. I'm gonna have to go through some hoops that I probably wouldn't wanna go through. Because you're in a dominant position. I'm in a dominant position, so I prefer just to start trying to, f if, if this isn't finishing, then I would prefer to start looking on at the ar finishes I can use on this arm or triangles. Right. Oh, very cool. But e either foot, you can do it with the left foot or I can do it with the right foot. It's all just about scooping up this arm and, and locking it into your hip. I, li I, like, I like this stuff all the time. Yep. Yeah. What do you think, Will? Does it work? Oh, yes, it works. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. So the other thing that we saw was the two-hand, you call the two-handed collar choke. Yeah. And um, traditionally, you see a lot of guys reaching for that leg for the nice, dramatic bow and arrow choke. But you were saying, if you have this grip, don't give it up. Yeah, and this is the, this is the instance that two is better than one, right? I, I feel, strongly feel if you have two collars on the back, and you have your choking hand set into place in any way, shape, or form, keep both collars and just take the angle. So if I were to show this on Will, if I have both collars all locked up, there's no need to, for me to let go with this hand to grab this leg because now I'm only choking him with one collar. So both collars are able to get both sides of the neck. Now what we'll typically see is that high level guys still take the same angle. That's why I call it a two collar bow and arrow. Just because this I call a two-collar choke, but to have that angle, I still, I still like to call it two-collar bow and arrow, so it, it sort of dictates, oh, I'm at the same angle as a bow and arrow. Same pressure, we still lock our feet the same, but you don't have to do anything. You're just leaning back. Keeping, keeping both of those collars, I think, is, is critical on finishing rather than letting that one collar go and letting the guy off the hook. I don't need to, to grab that leg to move to the angle, I, I can use my feet on this hips, especially this belt line hook. You can push off the guy's leg and move yourself and then figure, uh, cross your legs over the far shoulder and finish. Or I can do it face down, either way. Um, so I feel two color is, is the best way. I can, we can go through a little flow series if you'd like. Cause I, um, also one detail if you don't mind me showing is walking the hand up the collar. On the broadcast I said, there's a good way to walk your hand up the collar if I can't get the hand in deep. So maybe Will's hand fighting me and I just can't get my hand in very deep but I still get a, a grip on the collar. Um, this, this way to move up your hand about an inch on the collar is pretty good. Even if he's pushing down my hand, like you can see my hand is by the chest. If I take my right hand and snap all the, the slack out of the fabric, it moves up about one inch. And then that angle with the bow and arrow is gonna take all this slack out. So this hand doesn't need to grab high, it just needs to grab by the chest. And then when you get your angle for the bow and arrow, it takes all the slack out. Now the choke is tight on this one, the choke is tight on this one, and we can relax. You know, there's a lot of funky versions where if I can't get my hand very deep in the collar, you can use your foot, and we've seen all those different variations. But they're all two collar chokes. So I'm a big fan of the two collar version versus the one collar. Do you feel like there's more escapes if you go for the... Yeah, one? like if, if, if I go for the one uh, collar, remember if a guy has a two-on-one grip, now still, it's still awesome. I mean, let's, I'm, you know, I don't want to get anybody wrong here. The one collar is awesome. The two collar I feel is just a little bit better. Um, but again, if, if I hold the leg and he's two-on-one, he picks that up and over, I'm forced to go only on the arm. I've lost all my grips on him and I can't get back to the mount very easy. Two collar, you're still gripped on the person. So even if they counter, it's easy to go back to the mount and stay on that top position rather than being laid all the way off to the side, forced to go in the arm. So, cool. So you had a flow drill? Yeah, I have a flow drill from the turtle position actually. I think this is a nice little flow series. I like the two collar clock choke. 
just as much so the two collar clock is the exact same as the choke from the back it just it requires two collars and the only difference is I don't we don't walk around I just bring my body up and to the side here so it's a nice flow that I like to teach my students with both collars still still opening up the collar and getting an upside down grip so with that collar just remember a lot of people forget that you need to turn the collar upside inside out to really make an effective grip like this isn't a very good grip so make sure you flip the collar inside out and make or right side up or whatever you want to call it and make a good grip four fingers in or thumb inside and four finger grip and your wrist needs to be for the clock choke it needs to be straight across i'm not trying to reach up and in there i'll actually hurt my wrist a little bit so straight across the neck and then this one doesn't do anything with the collar, it just goes in the chest. And the, the flow is when I start to try to do the clock choke, Will sits to turn and face me because we all know that if I let him do this and I don't do anything, we end up over here, right? And then he can turn to face my legs and counter that clock choke. So there's a nice flow that we go from two collared clock choke, I start moving up and when he turns to face me, we just jump right over, we take his back. We go for our back choke, right? So first one is we get our good two collar bow and arrow. The second one is we get our crucifix. So I try to do the same thing. I, I'm late on my roll, so I loop the leg inside and we still can do the same exact collar choke from the crucifix. Or if we wanna take the arm, we move our left foot out to the wrist. We put our, wrist, our foot flat on the mat, knees nice and tight, and we hip in, right? If he changes the hands, yep, now we go for our, we could go for our Kimura. So anytime I wanna hit the Kimura, I go catch this leg, grab the knee, abandon the collar choke for the purpose of the flow, because I would never abandon it if I had that collar choke. Sit up and over, and we hit our inverted Kimura. It's a nice little flow that I have my guys do from that position all the time. That's really cool. Yeah. I think flow drills are something that not everybody does, but man, it's a good way to get to a lot of positions quickly. It's essential. I mean, it's, it's, it is what makes it, that rhythm go, um, especially when you're doing a flow from not only turtle, but when, he, when you're passing guard and he turns and you've already got your hand ready to go for the two collar, you go two collar, they flip you over, you take the back, you miss the back, you go crucifix, arm lock, they switch their arm, they defend the collar, then you have inverted Kimura, so, or inverted omoplata, it's crucial. That's awesome. Before we close, can we see that drill one last time? Yeah, absolutely. So, starting from the turtle, because if we wanted to start from cross side, we would just attach the grip, but we'll start from the turtle, open up the collar, inside out, wrist is straight across the neck, that's very important with the clock choke. This hand goes in by the chest. I start pulling the slack out, that's what makes the choke really start to go in. We walk with our right hip geared to the shoulder as he dives in, my head goes to the mat, I'm gonna jump my right knee into the crook of the hip and this one is becoming a hook as I move over. My right knee makes sure it comes through the hip line which lets me get that angle right off the roll. And we just lean back and we got the choke, okay? There's all kinds of good, other good stuff there too. I'm sure you guys watching it can see triangles. And the second one is I missed the, the hook, so he rolled me and I missed. I'm gonna get the arm as I roll over and you have your crucifix position, same choke. We finish with the same choke. This one or this one, right? Same choke. I like to keep the two collars. Then I go for the arm, so we open our legs. We make sure this foot slides to the, to the wrist so that I can open the wrist and then put my foot down. That's what's gonna lock out that elbow position and we hip in and we get the arm lock. If he changes his arms, I lock the figure four, I move out. I want that far hook on that knee so he can't turn to face my legs. We're gonna say that the choke is no longer available. We're gonna hold the fabric of the knee. Now I don't need the figure four anymore. I'm gonna come out, move my hips around, bring my arm over the head, and then again, here's our, here's our inverted umaplata. Okay, I make sure I just start to sit up and hit my inverted umaplata. Awesome stuff, Sean, thanks so much. Great flow, my pleasure, thank you. And those are the kind of things you can pick up when you watch a championship. So uh, go back through some of the matches on the PAN 2013 championship. It's available as a replay on BrutalVideos.com. I'm sure you'll pick up all kinds of other stuff that you want to drill also. Sean Williams, thanks again for coming in today. Thanks for helping out, Will. We'll see you next time in two weeks on the next episode of This Week in BJJ. That concludes this installment of This Week in BJJ. 
subscribe on iTunes, watch and review past episodes, and then be sure to join us again next Friday night right here for another live edition of This Week in BJJ.